looking for copyright. Uh, who has been to a conference before? Not just this kind of conference, but generally a conference. Okay, not all of you. Have you noticed, though, those of you who were, uh, that there are these some speakers who ask these like sort of stupid questions, uh, like who is alive just so people raise their hands? Have you seen that? <laughs> yeah, they don't necessarily do that because um, they have a job as a fitness instructor. They also do it. Uh, so you move a bit, so the blood flows and your brain is oxygenated and you can pay more attention. Okay, so this was uh, for fitness. Maybe you're wondering why, what does this bald guy do here? So there are two main reasons. One, I found the Smarters, which is the first growth hacking marketing agency in Romania. So basically what we do, we work with startups and medium companies and we help them grow to the same uh, marketing concept used by, maybe heard of these companies, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Uber, have you heard about them? No? Okay. Basically what we did, uh, we analyzed the way that they are doing marketing and we took their strategies, their tactics and we are using them for companies in Romania. That's on the one hand and on the other hand, uh, while I was a student, some years ago, I've done a lot of volunteering myself, about five years, so I know what it's like to be part of an NGO, what it's like to uh, have the need of reaching a lot of people, so uh, that's what I'm going to try to talk, talk today. Uh, but it all started, I guess, when, uh, when I was a bit younger, even as a, as a child, and I was a very, very annoying kind of child. Uh, I was always asking questions, why, how, what? I generally did not have toys, because whenever I received a new one, in a very short time I would like, open it up to see how, how it works, and I was always curious, you know, what is it made of? How is it working? And I actually kept this curiosity while growing up as well. And when I entered the marketing world, I, I kept trying to understand what is the sausage made of. In my case, how is the marketing made? And that's how I discovered growth hacking, which is um, a marketing approach that combines creativity with uh, database and testing, and also a sort of an obsession for growth. And that's what helped those companies uh, grow so fast. Uh, but also what I found, uh, or using this curiosity, I, I got in contact with this virality a few years ago and I was curious how are campaigns uh, going viral um, and how can we, as members of organizations, of businesses, even, even uh, government organizations, how can we create a campaign, create some messages that spread like wildfire, you know, and they reach everyone fast and wide. I heard some very good definitions of virality and, and going viral. Take for example this Oreo um, campaign for a few years ago. Um, so during the Super Bowl, which is the final uh, American football final, uh, a few years ago, four or five, I think, uh, during the game actually the lights went off on the stadium, and the social media team from Twitter actually created this this post, uh, basically saying that even though it's dark, you can still eat Oreo. Yeah, and. What do you do when you're at a stadium or at home watching the game and you don't see anything? You pick up your phone you know, and see what happened. And people saw this tweet and it, it spread like, like a wildfire. And that was very cool. However, when I took my what is the sausage made, made of approach and I researched a bit more, it turns out the reach that it had, and this, this post was actually, uh, there were loads of media outlets writing about them, you know, it was uh, shared a lot and uh, this was done so four or five years ago when Twitter and all the social media platforms weren't as big as they are today so it, it was huge at the moment but when I looked more into detail I, I realized that actually it was not necessarily this tweet and in that evening that got the tens of thousands of shares and press mentions what actually happened the next day the agency that was managing the Twitter account they sent some, some press releases sort of, sort of talking about the tweet and the campaign so uh, it was interesting for the press, they wrote about it, people were reading the news, then they were searching for this tweet to see what it was all about. And after that, time and time again, I saw that virality is not necessarily this like, mythical stuff that just happens or not, it actually can be influenced. It's not to totally controllable, there's a bit of luck involved, but it is inf influenceable, let's, let's say. So I will give you seven uh, uh, quick tips about how you can um, use uh, virality to, to spread the messages of your organizations, of your 
of your companies even, if you have a startup, uh, startup founders, okay? And the first thing that you have to understand is that virality is not magic, it's science. Well, at least, uh, at least sort of. No, it's a very simple formula, you just have to, to apply it. Yeah. Who, who can explain it? I uh, don't even know what, what is it. It's not actually that complicated. Because basically what does virality mean? Is that you bring some, so your message re reaches some people, your organization reaches some people there, and those people spread it forward and they bring other people, and other people, and other people. And basically this is how it works. So let's say if you have a viral coefficient of one, every person that you brought initially brings another person, and so on, and so on. And if this is higher, then it spreads very fast and, and, and wide. And this is the simplest definition that you have to understand of virality. And the good thing is that now we understand that basically what we have to do is to get people to share our message. And this is one of the main, uh, main points of virality. The rest is how we do it. And there are some simple ways, I don't think uh, to have them to you now. One is to make it easy for people to sh actually share your message. And the simplest way is actually to make the, the share buttons on, on your website or uh, on, on other platforms that have your content to make them visible. Take for example this uh, screenshot. The above is from a blog that I wrote a few years ago. It was my own. And it has 2.5k uh, shares, 2,500 shares almost. And the print screen is from uh, Ziaro Financiar, which is one of the main business uh, newspapers in Romania. And that article, it was one of the most read in the last 30 days, if I'm not mistaken. It has just like 90, 90 shares. And of course, there are more things that uh, influence the number of shares. One was that my content was more shared, but it was more emotional. I can't remember what, what that article was about. So there were more things, but one important uh, thing that, that I did to increase the number of shares and the reach of, of my articles was to actually make it easy for people to share them. You can see there's a lot of white space uh, around the, the buttons. I use some contrasting images so people will see them. Also, I place them at the end of the article, not like it was on the article and chart, just under the title. Because generally, we share an article. If it's on Facebook, we can share them even if we don't read them. You know, because it looks, looks cool. The title is interesting. But generally, you share something after you read it, after you consume the content, right? But there, actually, their share buttons were uh, on top, just under the title. So you would finish the article, and then if you liked it, maybe you wanted to share it, but you couldn't find the buttons. And imagine how hard it is to go and copy the URL, and then share it manually on, on Facebook or, um, or Twitter or any other platform that, that you use. So that would be one thing to make it easy for people to share. And the second one would be to actually ask them. And studies have shown that uh, just the simple act of asking people to do something, ideally even offering a reason why, is a very powerful persuasion technique. Although it looks very simple, it, it works. So the second thing that you have to do is actually ask people to do that. You can do it on the website. Uh, if, uh, if you saw, I actually had the sort of a call to action, sharing is caring. Um, so as, do that on website, do that on your social media posts, wherever you do it, do it at, at the conference. So don't just think about variety just in, in the online world. Um, so this work would be two things, but the, the best and the best would be to actually incorporate this sharing part in your product or in your com campaign as well, in your organization. Um, and for example, do you know what does this represent? Ice bucket challenge. You know what ice bucket challenge was, so you should put some ice in the bucket, put some uh, water on top of it, and then while the filming, uh, pour it on top your, of your head and donate. Donate. Very good. Who, who did ice bucket challenge? Okay, only a few. Did, did you donate? Okay, perfect. Most people just they just did the fun part without without donating. Yeah. So you would have to donate and then pass the challenge to three other persons. And this is one of the main reasons why it spreads so far, so fast, and so, so wide. Because this sharing part, you know, this um, paid forward was included in the product, we say it as well. And tech startups do it as well. Um, uh, Dropbox is a, a platform that allows you to store and access your files from anywhere. One of the most efficient marketing tactics that they have is actually this referral program. So if you are a Dropbox user and you invite a friend to use the service, both you and him receive some, some free space, extra space, right? 
uh, Airbnb does it as well if you know it uh, when you invite friends to use the platform, so does Uber. So basically it's just um, ask people and include this in, in your messages, in your in your product, in your organization, this this sharing part. Um, now, while talking about Varalt, it might look very linear, like one people brings the next and the next and so on. But actually what happens is that not all shares are weaker. First is some people do not share those best and they do not pay, pay our message forward. But also some, some people that uh, do share, they have a larger impact than the others. There's a huge difference between someone, uh, a share from someone with 150 friends on Facebook and someone with 5,000 or maybe 20,000 followers. So actually what we have to do is to, to involve in our campaign these influencers or micro-influencers. Uh, for example, this is an infographic that was viral about two years ago and it had a few million views on the website. It was the press all around the world actually wrote about it. But the thing is that it, it was not post and then became viral. It stood on that website for one or two months until a YouTube influencer, a YouTube creator discovered he shared it. And then other influencers saw it and then it, it spread. So we have to look proactively for people, people with influence and involve them in, in our campaigns and you don't have to go to the largest, biggest celebrities in, in your country. Start with small, depending on, on your resources. Generally, for our campaigns, we use those micro-influencers, so people who have between 5,000 and 25,000 followers. So start how you can. The important thing is to identify who does your audience follow. And this is how you, you can find the, the best ones. So search on Google for uh, tools to find influencers on different platforms, you will find a lot of, a lot of idea, ideas. Another very important uh, principle thing is to, uh, to go where your audience is, but this is not me, but I was on TV. Uh, so when I was in, in NGOs, um, one of the things that we did generally for, uh, for events was we were sending press releases we actually got on TV. And we invested a lot of time on re and resources to create did those opportunities. However, when we asked people how they find out about the, the project, everyone said it was Facebook, it was from other friends, it was from their organizations. So we, we spread, we uh, used a lot of resources to go on TV, but then shockingly, uh, students do not necessarily read the newspaper and they definitely do not watch TV at 8 in the morning when the show that we were invited on air. And this is one of the things that we generally do. Uh, we go where it's easier for us to create content or to, to spread our message, not when, where our audience is. And, for example, uh, during the break we discuss how uh, Facebook influenced the vote on Brexit or the, the elections in, in the US. But then when we go in the meeting room and discuss the budget for the next year for the organization or the project, generally the budget for marketing or for online marketing is it's what left. And when you have a big marketing budget, it's on things that we are used to do. So we have this sort of a, a double personality. Um, okay, so look, look at the, the platforms that your audience uses and we don't have enough time today to, because we need probably like one day for each, for each of them and how to, to use them. And the fourth, and you should adapt your, your message to, uh, to your target audience. And for example, I often did this exercise where um, I challenged the audience to tell me a title for it. So I would give you this information. You are back in high school, and you are in 11th grade, and you have to give me a title for the high school newspaper, which is also read by, by high school students, or pupils, I don't know how they are called. Uh, so we don't have time now, but generally these are all, this is the information, and generally the titles that that we would receive, I would receive more like the president of the EU uh, is coming to our country or an important event tomorrow. But generally, what should the title for a high school newspaper be for this, this kind of information? There will be no school tomorrow or when we <laughs> event the title. And almost no one, just generally when the audience was young, when they were in high school, they would actually get get the title from the first try, but uh, for, for us it's not, we can't do that, although I mentioned that it's, it's for other, other high school students. And this is something that we do daily, we talk, like in our own terms, if you look at the website of companies or even organizations, no, our purpose is to bring a positive impact while taking care of our stakeholders and stuff like that, which actually mean nothing, and especially for our target audience, it's not about them, it's always about us. 
Um, the descriptions are always the, the same. Okay, and what I would like to mention, this is important, you should also adapt the message to the platform, you know? I believe Vita is the present and the future, so you should invest in learning how to use it. If you don't know how, find someone 20 years old. There are very good uh, mobile apps uh, that can help you don't need uh, expensive software. Um, and the unexpected part is very, very important. Uh, for example, we do, do not expect people to pour ice on their head. Uh, one campaign that we did uh, in Timisoara was to, we brought people from the local orchestra and they just started singing in, in the city center. And people gathered there, we also made a video and became viral on, on, on social media. And there are two more important things, emotions and stories. Um, and even though we follow all, all the things that I've talked before, if we don't put some something you know more more subtle there, some some emotion, either it's, it's something fun or or interesting. But one way to understand if your message has virality potential or not is the body reaction. You know, you, when you think of it or when you read it, if it makes you giggle or say something, move, then you know you have something with, with potential. And look at that, and also use stories in 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 your campaigns and for your organizations because since the human a species existed. This was the way that we uh, passed on information and, and messages. So use them in, in, in your campaigns. Thank you. Does anyone remember the virality formula? <laughs> ah, it was simple. Yeah. So I have a sticker for the person that remembers. Well, yeah, see. Yeah, but what, was the, what were the percentages? The numbers. The final number was 25. Can you say it again? So it was a referral, squeeze through, and conversion. Yeah. And the final result was 0.5. Ah, close enough. Perfect. <laughs> close enough or perfect? It's close enough because it was, it was 5 times 0.5 times 0.5. But <laughs> no, it was 5 times 0.2. Yeah. 0.2, yeah. 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 Because it's the equal is 0, 0.5. Yeah, what? Give her a sticker. Okay. <laughs> Questions for Tom? Yeah. Okay, so I was wondering, how can we make sure that our message uh, doesn't get, uh, get lost uh, in the emotional thing? Because, for example, in that fighting challenge, not so many people knew about the ESL uh, message. Yeah, this this is uh, it depends a lot of on the message and the format. But one thing would be to make it clear, and especially the first people who pay, uh, paid forward, maybe the influencers, make sure that they mention it. And ideally, again, would be uh, maybe in in like the ice bucket challenge. After you put uh, your uh, the water on your head, then you challenge other people. So X, Y, and Z uh, do the same thing and don't it. No, maybe put that this. The real action, call to action, make it make it more more visible. But especially when you have this emotion, but it for many people it will get lost. But anyway, those that actually care, they will um, uh, they will do what's needed to be done, and you re use the rest of them just to get your message to the ones that are your target audience. Because even with this viral campaigns, most people are not in our audience. You know? That's why you shouldn't always try to get viral campaigns, only when they make sense, when you want to reach a lot of people. Hey, I liked your speech, it was very energetic, but I really didn't like the message that you gave us, because um, it's for me, uh, everything you told about is manipulation, uh, not the real, like, um, my observation is um, viral thing is a sparkle. You don't. You, there is no formula for that. And if if you say that there, there is formula, um, I would love to see any like any kind of campaign that you did or your organization did that became really wide viral. Thanks. Yeah, I didn't have time for that. So we have two in Romania. I mentioned one. So we work with businesses. So I don't have that many um, for NGOs. That was that one in, with the, the orchestra, so we had to, for a local business, I think the, the results are decent, so it had like the video like 500,000 um, views, the post had like 1 million reach in, in Romania. Uh, then we had another one for a small shop, like gift shop in Timisoara, 
uh, we did like two videos, they were around 25, 30,000 uh, views on, on Facebook. So that we actually tested them and um, let me try to find some ideas before, so before, before being in, in business, but no, they were. So generally you can't respect all seven, seven principles, but if you like uh, check four or five of them, uh, you can actually, you, you will see. But just, just like asking for the share and making that visible, you will see that like 20, 30, you will have 20-30% more reach. And this, uh, so, so basically this helps if you have a good, uh, good product. And I think for the uh, ALS or what was the name of the association that started the Ice Bucket Challenge, they received the, the donation that they received in the year with that challenge, they were much higher than the previous year. So yeah, this is a tool that helps us reach our organization's objectives. But, no, manipulation, I think it's something that you do against other people's interests, but I haven't seen it I haven't uh, encouraged things that are against some other people. Just make them laugh and then give you some money so you can do something positive. Thank you. Last question. Uh, just a sh short remark on the, the video enforcing the message. Uh, what I've seen working in the last few years is at the short, uh, at the end of the video, you can enforce it with a small graphic uh, insert. Uh, when you say donate audio and you enforce it in I don't know a small part of the video, you can also put it graphically and it sticks to the uh, to the viewer. So it's just a, sh a short I don't know after feature uh, firework that I don't know, completes the the message. Yeah, definitely. So if it's your video, again make a, like a visible call to action for what you want people to do. Thank you. Thank you. Just to have to, I see